Welcome back to it, guys. And no more Marshall Monday, but it is Marshall's birthday. So maybe we could dub today Montana Wednesday. I don't know. I could use some help. <laughs> uh, as we are joined this morning by uh, two distinguished guests who will help us to explore the Montano name in a new way. So good morning and welcome to Elizabeth Lady Montano, the uh, managing director, rather, sorry, the director of the Montano's Chocolate Company and Marcus Montano, the managing director. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Welcome good and thank morning. you for coming in to make it sweet because we're talking good stuff, Montano's good stuff. Chocolate. Thank you for having us. So from the, is it the happy bar, is it? The uh, happy, happy people, nation. happy nation bar, to being uh, the second ranked indigenous chocolate in the country. And now even bigger things are happening. Bring me up to speed with Montano's Chocolate Company. Okay, well, Montano's Chocolate Company, you know, we've been making our bar, or Marshall Montano's 60% bar for some time now. Mm -hmm. And we finally decided it was time we do it ourselves. So we have since uh, built our factory, did all the research, did all the training, and we have started producing our very own It is bar. here. It is here. Oh. <laughs> Just about, about almost like a year ago, there was a story that it is coming soon. So in under a year, that's happened. Yes, yes, we have. We have. It was an intense year because we were also battling with the COVID. Uh -huh. and, I mean, we had to actually train to make the chocolate. So in that, it was a bit of a challenge, but as you know, how we do it. Clearly. <laughs> we get it done. You get it done, you get it done. <laughs> now, a factory means more bars, of course, but then more variety, perhaps? Yes, so we are adding a few. So before it was just the bar. Right. Now that we're making our chocolate, we could uh, also make and produce cocoa butter, cocoa powder. And then, of course, we have some very nice ideas coming up that we're going to be... It's going to be surprising. I'm going to find out these ideas before <laughs> the end of this morning. It's going to be sweet. Uh, mm, I like where you're going with this. Because you had the sweet honor. I saw you dressed up all in blue. Was it Friday last? Yes. Where the TT Chamber of Commerce included you as one of the entrepreneurs to watch, essentially. And <laughs> what exactly that entails? Why? How do they select these persons of focus? Well, uh, people were nominated mm -hmm. um, based on their efforts to promote um, manufacturing and to promote export and to mm. develop entrepreneurship. And um, we were nominated and surprisingly we made the final. <laughs> you say surprisingly? We didn't win, but it is still good that we were chosen as a finalist and uh, we congratulate uh, Kyle and everything well, is fine. We have since been here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, you said that it is underscoring certain facets. So entrepreneurship, absolutely. And granted that we have a factory now, we are looking at making things that are more indigenous to Trinidad and Tobago, diversifying and innovating, definitely being up there. But to do all of that in a pandemic with limited resources locally would have meant that there was some sort of external, as you mentioned, exporting being a part of it, some sort of external influence, some sort of camaraderie, I imagine. How did you do it? <laughs> How do we figure out how to go from a bar to a factory? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we well, first of all, we had um, we had RTT, which assisted us, which made our bar mm. first. So they assisted us with using same Zoom and, and internet, and um, then we had a consultant, Brian Cisneros, who is um, from Seattle. We yeah. met him in um, in twenty fourteen when I took RTT to um, the Northwest Chocolate F um, Festival. And um, there, ArcTT won the Sustainable Award, and then we became friends, and, and Cicinero came to Trinidad, and he worked with several people here, and then he's one of our um, external consultants. Mm, so we got but we worked, Yeah, already. but we worked on, on internet mainly, and then when the manufacturing sector opened, right. we, um, we came out in small groups. We also had large space to accommodate the people who were involved and we did it and eventually yeah. we roll in. Because <laughs> with the consultant, he was also, um, when we decided on what sort of production level we wanted, he was the one that decided and helped, uh, and helped us choose the equipment that we would need and how much of it we would need. And then we also liaised with Kariri on the design of the factory. 
you know, going into food production, it's uh, very specific, down to the paint on the wall is, mm. is important. Right, right, because you don't want a needle lead paint, base paint and all that sort yes. of specific. So I can imagine yes. the Easy how to tedious clean, that is. No and if you're starting, it's to start right. Mm -hmm. I like the energy. <laughs> <laughs> so then when you're starting things like, I don't know, tours or other facets, because it's incredulous to me that, especially in a pandemic, you can create an entire, well, develop an yeah. industry because we have a uh, minister of trade talking about encouraging entrepreneurs and farmers in the cocoa and chocolate industry particularly as we are seeing a lot more interest in this industry internationally so there are things of course you're going to have to keep to yourselves your little secrets <laughs> your little competitive edge but it is incredible to me that it is being done and so quickly what are some of the challenges pandemic aside because that's obvious that you immediately realize within your first year well, definitely. It's, it's not named craft chocolate because anyone can do it. Mm. It is an art. <laughs> and we learned that the hard way. Oh boy. I can tell you, we, <laughs> <laughs> we had chocolate explosions. We had, you know, <laughs> yeah, we had it all. Straight up Willy Wonka style. Oh, so wow. <laughs> I, that's exactly what came to mind. Oh yeah. boy. So we had it. It was challenging. As I said, it's learning to make fine chocolate and not until you get into it you realize how every aspect of it is important from the from choosing the right bean mm. the flavor of the bean the smell the taste you're constantly tasting and your, 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 your taste buds are being challenged every day and you're trying to maintain a standard mm. it, it, it's tough at the same time the chocolate industry is also the craft chocolate industry is new right so they are now developing these, these equipment that we are using. So we too are learning, we are liaising with the, um, with the manufacturers of the equipment. Mm -hmm. So we back and forth. So let's go granular. From the point of uh, growing to the point of manufacturing, how much of the Montano name is actually involved in that process? Do we have our own plantations? Do we have our <laughs> own suppliers? I'm getting down because please, this... Please don't encourage us. Oh. <laughs> okay, came on. I'm not going to say it now. I, I, I have a cross paths with a lady. Was it in Carrie Festa? Right. where she would have rolled out for me very beautifully all the details of that one bar. So I know there has to be a lot of passion and a lot of detail in this. How far back does the Montano name go with the chocolate? Well, um, I just want to take the part that he tell it, say don't encourage. <laughs> 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 but um, we are of three generations, right? And um, Mr. Montano, Marshall and myself, we really, really into um, getting these old estates and um, trying to revitalize. Mm. But uh, Marcus is more conservative when it comes to spending <laughs> money, you know. So, he, <laughs> so this is why he's saying don't encourage him. But he, he's there. But um, we have other plans other than um, just getting into the revitalization because right now we just involve in uh, making the bars and then we also involve it working with um, rural communities. Like when we started in 2014, I always say it was by accident because um, Jillian came to us in the office to sell us her chocolate to put in our store in the airport. Right. It just happened at the same time, Marshall Monday was happening around Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And I know my head always going, so why we don't make a chocolate? Right. And then the theme was Happy Nation and the chocolate supposed to make you happy. We did it and it worked and the rest was um, history. Uh, I, I Starting a chocolate business, like you said, that that was the initiation of it, and it grew from there. But would you say it's similar to to starting, like when you did start Marshall's music career? Is it a similar process in terms of having to focus on the nitty gritty details of the the pains of going here, there, and everywhere, and doing it yourself to get it up and off the ground? Everything, and thank God, <laughs> thank God, I had Marcus. Marcus is uh, very disciplined, having that um, army background, working in the Coast Guard. So I was relieved from. A second time, mm. you know, so right. that Marcus sort of, he could explain how he went through that and some of the other involvements. Like I was saying, we were involved at a community level also right. Right. while Jillian was billing our, um, our chocolate. Mm. So this is where we started in 2014 and we worked with communities like Lopino and um, Brasso Seco and Bish and Kush and we helped them 
to start their chocolate business by giving them um, what you call a soft loan. So we gave them this loan in order to buy the equipment, pay Jillian to train them, and then they went forth. And, um, and we also had help because I always like to involve corporate, my corporate partners. So we had help from court and we had help from FCB. And um, we, we did this and when they made their profit, they will pay us back the loan and we'll give it to another community. Right. Now they're self-sufficient, uh -huh. so they don't need Montano's foundation again and they're on their own. We then moved on to Marshall's village, our village, Separia, and we're working with Y Farm to do their chocolate, which is called Daisy Darling, from Daisy Voise. And, um, and now, under the leadership of Marcus, we're going to do help farmers again in another way. So apart from the commercial part, we have the CSR part. You're going to definitely tell us about that, because when <laughs> we're hearing, of course, as you say, self-sustaining villages yes. popping up, so that the industry itself is going to be, yeah. it's looking good, it's looking bright. And they're doing well. We're going to have growers, we're going to have the supply that you need uh, for the beans, for the quality to be maintained, be able, yeah. and to be able to continue to grow the company. And to grow the company, you have to have innovations and changes. So what is new? Okay, so one of the Marsha and I, we met with um, the Chocolate Development Corporation and, and what stood out to us in there uh, were some of the problems farmers, local farmers have the cocoa mm -hmm. in the cocoa industry. Right. And one of the main things uh, was storage. Mm -hmm. So we decided, hey, look, we have the facility and the capability of we could take your cocoa and um, make it into something else that will be easier to store. Mm. And, it, and, and, and therefore extending its shelf life. Right. So we have options of the cocoa butter, we have the cocoa powder, we could bring it just to nibs if that's what you wish. And, and um, that way we could help the, the, the whole industry. Absolutely. Then. And create, with, with, and create less yes. loss yes. Yes, at yes. the end of the day. And perhaps change yeah. the name because then it's well beyond chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we are like, I'm, I'm here at Cocoa Butter because let me tell you in the morning, <laughs> I'd be ashy. And these are things that we are seeing uh, making a lot more, uh, taking a lot more prominence as people have lifestyle changes. Mm. In, in recent times, we have been exposed to a lot more of Marshall's vegan lifestyle. Right. And we are seeing a lot more of Trinidad and Tobago adopting a vegan lifestyle, not just because they can now plant their own gardens, but they see the health the, benefits yes. to it. They see the benefits to it. So this sort of diversification of your portfolio could see an entirely different it stream is. coming <laughs> up to because, fruition. Because, as you said, um, people are changing their lifestyle, and our product is totally vegan. Mm -hmm. We have no um, dairy at all in it. We have no additives, no preservatives, pure um, Trinitario cocoa in, in terms of the nibs and the cocoa butter mm -hmm. and then we just use some um, demerara sugar, brown sugar. The cocoa butter for your hand, pure, mm -hmm. nothing mixed. So you can get it from us. Marcus, <laughs> oh the lady, and, and he loves his cocoa mm, butter. Not really, not at all. You're all on the right track We have me. pure cocoa butter, nothing is mixed, you know, in it. Um, mm. And this is what we want to do. We want to encourage that healthy lifestyle because, well, I think 50% of the first and second generation are vegans. Who? Mm. Mm. Like you know, what, what percentage you for them? What percentage you for them? Because in between, sometimes he comes. You mean back. medium rare? <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely not in between. He's not mommy as much as he would like it. So 50. <laughs> and then Marcus. Marcus, no, and Marcus and Monty. <laughs> Fair. But that means that it's appealing to everybody. Yes. yes. There's literally something for everybody. So we've got a new factory. We've got incredible products coming through. We are helping villages. We are helping entrepreneurship throughout Trinidad and Tobago. What's next for the region and the globe? Right. So we are working with Export TT, um, where they are helping some of these new companies to be able to export their product. So we did um, a research, um, Export TT did a research. They asked us which CARICOM countries we would like to go to. Mm -hmm. And um, again, based on our statistics in terms of fan base, um, Guyana is the top um, Caribbean country in terms of fans. When we go there, 40,000 people. And in addition to that, we took advantage that the sugar comes from the Marara. Ah. So, you know, using that, we're using that as a marketing. So we went there. Then Jamaica, 
Jamaica, um, I think their import of chocolate from Trinidad is very high. Mm -hmm. And then we have a background in Jamaica. Good Monty morning, and I Natalie. studied there, <laughs> and Marcus and Marshall spent their early years in Jamaica because they were with us while we studied. And we also have a very large fan base there. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Antigua and Barbuda because Marshall works with the government there too when they had the storm and everything. So right. people appreciate that. And then Barbados. So Guyana, Jamaica, um, Antigua and Barbuda. And Barbados are the first four CARICOM countries. However, again, we have been involved in what you call missions abroad until the pandemic came. Right. And um, this is what we'll have organizations like Export TT and Caribbean Export um, supporting companies, but they would take one person to go. But being in the business, I know one is not enough. <laughs> so Montano's Chocolate Company invested in, say, like two other people. I would normally carry one grandchild, which is from the third generation, and then my assistant, I, we would go. And um, we went to Colombia, we went to Germany, we went to South Korea, mm -hmm. right? Um, we left lasting impressions, like when we went to Colombia, I took my granddaughter, who is Spanish, mm -hmm. and she was our interpreter. She also studied dance at university. And I saw some of you might know her, of course. Melody. So Melody had a whole boy, party. she had <laughs> them go in with salsa and everything. Nice. And then I took uh, uh, my grandson, Raylan, he went to South Korea with us. Then Marcus's daughter is studying, um, is studying culinary arts in the States. Uh. Mm -hmm. And she would come, she appeared on TV and, and she it? does the look. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the things. chocolate, but okay, medium rare. <laughs> you know, and yes, and, um, and Mali's studying that, so she's more into like um, development, research and development mm -hmm. too. So that we have been staying on top of the Absolutely. game. Absolutely. And we have been doing pretty And this well. is something very similar to what we were talking about earlier with regards to succession planning. Mm -hmm. And we see yeah. that you're clearly putting the things in place to make sure yes. that all the generations learn the business, yeah. understand the business, and contribute to the business. Yeah. Right now, we have one dirty in his hands. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Marcus's son, Nicholas. Marshall's son. Marshall's son. <laughs> Marshall's son, <laughs> son Nicholas. You just say your grandson. Yeah. Safe that way. <laughs> what did I say? Marcus's son. She said, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't let Elisha hear that, you know. What are you saying? How did you think it's happening? Marshall's son, Nicholas, mm -hmm. he is working in the factory under Marcus and he's um, a processor they're making it plus he had studied um, film so he's also working in the marketing department so we phenomenal. have phenomenal <laughs> the Montano name lives on in so many ways and it is all sweet I'm loving this I'm really excited about those uh, possibilities abroad because we are seeing yes. collaborations I mean the pandemic flattened the earth in a good way it made yeah. a lot of positive things much more way accessible. for us yeah and so I'm really excited as to what those collaborations or what those efforts may look like. And I am also interested in how we here in Trinbago could get mm. our hands on some of these new products and innovations. And new ideas, Marcus. Yeah, so um, actually we do have a lot of new collaborations and we encourage it. Um, we've been working with um, other manufacturers of other products. I try not to... I'm trying to get out. So I'm going to go I'm going to keep asking till <laughs> you slip up. Slip up. No, I'm yeah. trying to just um, <laughs> navigate <laughs> around it, you know? <laughs> what you were supposed to do is tell lady. Lady would have told me. <laughs> we, we have, uh, we, and, and it's not only local. Well, we are glad to work with the local right. companies, you know, and, and, and make our tag, share the tag. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have um, interests from Canada, we have out of the US and then we have England, which is one of the more recent um, things. So we, yes, we are looking at, and we, we, we open to any idea. I get calls daily <laughs> and I'm saying, <laughs> yes, I'm willing, morning. I will send you a sample. Let's see what we can do. Oh, okay. Because you're still yeah. flying. <laughs> of course, I just came in last night. <laughs> he laughed like <laughs> I was like, what, and do all these things? <laughs> She's an agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discipline, discipline, yeah, yeah. and do it well. That's my love. I'm not going to, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> the sea kids, you too can be on multiple boards. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you very much for joining us this morning. Not just because I like chocolates and I'm excited about this Di Montano name, but because you've given us new meaning and new life into things like succession planning, mm -hmm. things like innovation, and continue to show us how to take our families with us every step of the way. I Definitely. absolutely love it. Family is important. Absolutely. And uh, in the time of the pandemic, it was so good that we were working mainly with family and um, people from the community. Like where, where we have the factory there, we have people working from Maloney, people from um, Aruka itself, mm -hmm. Fin City and that kind of thing. It's all in the neighborhood. No, guys, I'm from Arima, so if I just show up at the factory... We have Arima too, show, we have Arima too. A little bars and things. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to get markers, don't drink. forget the, um, the cocoa butter mm -hmm. for her. So my yes. cocoa butter is on the way. <laughs> yes. I need about three bars for the hosts and how many crew members we have. I'm ready. Oh, gosh. She didn't make it. She just come and collect. I am ready. We like to teach, you know. We will like to teach, so... Yeah, now, and the thing is, once you go in there, people get real pleasure at seeing the bean move from bean to bar mm. it is yes they're real excited well as yeah. you guys move from bean to bar from shore to shore whatever you do we're going to keep our eyes on you thank you again for joining us this morning ladies and gentlemen the montano chocolate company is doing sweet things mm -hmm. and they're sharing us to us we sharing it with us here on the now morning show when we get back we are getting into the spirits of christmas and who knows chocolate bars for everybody yeah, this yeah, christmas no problem. from the montanos <laughs> is the now morning show guys you're coming back notice i didn't say from me <laughs> say from them